Hello YouTube, in this video we are going to be comparing the M1 MacBook Air versus the MacBook Pro and also the performance of Apple Silicon Macs versus the Intel Macs. So this transition is one of the important transitions since the PowerPC to Intel a decade ago. So first let's compare the physical sizes of the MacBook Air to the Pro. So at the thinnest point the Air is slightly thinner because of the wedge shape design and also it helps in a better palm rest angle. So at the thickest point, the case is different. The uniform size of the MacBook Pro, so it's slightly thinner than the MacBook Air's thickest point. Compared to the ports, so both have two USB Type-C ports, which supports USB 4.0 or Thunderbolt 2. And the other side, it has a 3.5 mm headphone jack, and the weight is uh, around 100 grams lighter. Apart from that, the main difference is this time the MacBook Air is fanless, as you can see here, which is like a silent iPad, but more powerful than the MacBook Pro 16 inch of the previous Intel generation. And both share the same retina display, the 2560 by 1600 pixels, and the brightness, it's slightly lesser, but both now has the P3 white color gamut. So as you can see here, the previous Intel generation MacBook Air didn't have the P3 white color gamut. And so as you saw, there is no much difference between the Pro and the Air, but the Pro has active cooling system and 20 hour battle life compared to the 18 hours and the fanless architecture of the Air. So now let's compare the MacBook Air M1 versus the MacBook Pro M1. So as you can see here, both have the same 13.3 inch retina display with the 2560 by 1600. Then both are expandable up to 16 gigabytes, but the battle life, it's as you can see the 12 hours with the previous one but this one has a 20 hours and 18 hours so the m1 chip it's an 8 core cpu with the 4 performance and 4 efficiency cores the 8 core gpu but the macbook air has a 7 core but it can go up to 8 core when it's required and the brightness is 400 nits with the macbook air but the pro has 500 nits of brightness but both share the same 720p cam which is a bummer but still, yeah, and the microphone in the Pro is a studio quality, but both have the same three microphone array. So this time we have the Wi-Fi 6 in all the MacBooks and we have USB 4, so which is an upgrade from the USB 3.2 from the previous generation and they support Thunderbolt 2. And then we have all the same things. So the battery life is just insane. So we have a 15 hours and 17 hours of wireless web. So 18 hours in the Air and 20 hours in the Pro. So those were the specs, but the main difference in the Pro is sustained thermal efficiency in running CPU or GPU intensive tasks for a longer time. So you require a Pro, or you require a 500 nits of brightness to work under direct sunlight and have 20 hours battery life, and you require the touch for absolutely, and a studio quality microphone. So these are the things, then you require a Pro. But the MacBook Air has a gold color, it's lighter, it's cheaper, and there's no touch bar. So that's the difference. So now let's compare the performance of the Apple Silicon Max compared to the Intel Max. So that means running Geekbench 5, the single core score is around 1634 and the multi core is around 7200. So which is much better as you can see here now running on Rosetta, the single core is around 1313 and the multi core around 5800, which is much better. And as you can see the graph here, so it compares much higher than the iMac, uh, the 2020 iMac, so which is uh, really great. Another advantage that you get is you can run the iPad or iPhone applications right on the Mac, so which you couldn't do it in earlier Intel Macs. So as you saw from the benchmark, it ranks much higher than the dedicated professional desktop like the iMac. So coming to the real world use, so if you're using Final Cut Pro or Logic or Xcode or some of the Apple applications for your work, so this is going to make your work really quick and faster. Or if you're using a new applications which are using machine learning, augmented reality, or it uses artificial intelligence. So those things are going to work insanely fast as it has a dedicated processor in it. So that's also going to see a lot of improvements. And now coming to the applications which are not optimized for the M1 Max. So that's also going to work really better. As you saw the Geekbench scores on Rosetta, which is much higher than the MacBook Pro 16 inch. So apps such as Adobe Photoshop or Premiere Pro. So those going to work really cool and uh, really better. So you don't have to worry about that. And if you're using your Mac for your day-to-day -day work, for example, 
Microsoft applications like MS Office or Excel or PowerPoint. So those are also going to work. And there is a misconception that only the applications from the App Store is going to work. No, that's not the case. You can download the application just like you did it in the previous Macs. So those things are going to work on Rosetta. And there are a few applications which are not optimized. So uh, those are not going to work. So for example, there is one, one catch, really one catch here. So that is, so if you're using Windows in Bootcamp or using a parallel desktop, so that's not going to work. So you, you're not going to be able to run the games or some applications on Windows. So those things are not going to work at, or at least. So in future, it might support the parallels, but I don't think the Bootcamp is going to come again. And the another big thing is the eGPU or the external GPU, which you can attach it to the previous Macs. So that we are not going to be able to attach it this time. So those are the caveats. So apart from that, the M1 or the Apple Silicon Max is just insane, I would say, and it's much better value proposition. And the MacBook Air this time is a better value than the MacBook Pro unless you require a fan and the professional things. So that's all I had in this video. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more and peace.